We're Smalley Film Club and we're making a film about some of the history of Stoke Newington. Yeah! yeah! First noted in 1329, making it the longest street name in Greater London. In around 1790, Jonathan Hall began to lay out a stake called Stone Newton Park. And in 1793 he built the mansion known as Paradise House. Clitthold Park was one of the first municipal parks in London in which bird and animal life was provided. An animal enclosure is, was established before 1900 and contained donkeys, a wallaby and an ivory. Housing housing British birds as well, as well as a herd of deer. William Patton, the school that was that was built in 1892, used to be called William Patton Junior School. It wasn't affected by the World War II bombing, but the main area of damage was D Dynaval Road, where a V1 bomb landed. Mark Bolan came to the school and William Patton School is still being used as a school in Stoke Newington. Alan Denny has been taking photos of Stoke Newington since he moved there in 1970. He says that then Stoke Newington was one of the poorest places in Hackney. He has photographed the streets, the shops and the houses. He has taken photographs of protests, festivals, arrests and strikes. There are lots of poor conditions in the photographs. You can see streets full of rubbish, lots of people protesting and people going about their daily lives. The Craves were notorious gangsters in the 1960s. Even though they were born in Bethnal Green, they came to Stoke Newington to collect taxes for protection. The Craves were locked up in the tower like their father for avoiding national service and they were amongst the last group to be locked up in the Tower of London. They tried, they, there was a man called Lucian Freud and he owed the Craves over half a million pounds and some people may know him because he was a famous painter. They got rid of the Maltese gang, which were around Stoke Newton in certain pubs. Ronnie Cray killed um, George Cornell in a pub called The Blind Beggar in Bethnal Green, and it was for calling his boyfriend a uh, fat poof. Reggie, Reggie Cray also killed a local criminal called Jack the Hat on Evering Road right here, and he, people say he was shot, though he was actually stabbed. We're at Gibson's Gardens in Stoke Newington, where the latest craze film starring Tom Hardy was shot. How, how long has that library been here? This library opened in 1892. How do you think libraries will end up in the future? Not everyone uses it, but I think they should because it's a really great service. If you can't afford to have broadband in your home, you can use free Wi-Fi in the library. You can use our computers if you can't afford your own. We have a wonderful selection of hundreds of thousands of books. We can get any book that you want. In 1840, Abney Park opened as a model garden cemetery, a pioneering place of rest. There is free public access so, people, so everyone can come and enjoy the oasis of peace. There are over 200,000 people laid to rest in Abney Park Cemetery, from old famous names such as William Booth to unsung heroes such as Betsy, who aged 60 worked as a nurse against Florence Nightingale. Wait.
Jackie hasn't got anything. All right, we need to get Jackie. Yeah, it's mine. Yeah, it's mine, sir. Can I borrow? The first foundation stone of the chapel was laid by the Lord Mayor of London, Sir Chapman Marshall, on the 20th of May 1840, the day of the opening ceremony of Abney Park Cemetery. The architect of the chapel was William Hosking, and the chapel is the oldest surviving non-denominational chapel in Europe. The chapel is Gothic, and the cemetery is named after Sir Thomas Abney, who served as Lord Mayor for London in 1700-01. The chapel's the chapel opened in 1840 but was left abandoned in the 1970s after a fire destroyed its interior. The national heritage is now restoring the chapel back to its former glory. This is a little bit of information we found out about Stoke Newington. We hope you've in really enjoyed our film by Smalley Film Club.